My name is Shane Coughlin, and I am the general manager of the OpenChain project at the Linux Foundation. Today, I'm going to try and give you a bird's eye view of what we're up to and why it matters for you in InnerSource. I'm also going to try and explain some ancillary things like scaling or how you can take some of the approaches we've taken and apply them to whatever else you're doing. Now, fundamentally, uh, the Open Chain project is about the supply chain. And we're interested in how the supply chain can be managed. Uh, the mental picture that people have of the supply chain is something neat and tidy, where the reality of the supply chain is somewhat chaotic. There are interesting data points about today's supply chain. If we're looking at external supply chains, where we have most of the data at this juncture in time, for example, over 65% of managers are doing their management of their supply chain with Excel spreadsheets. Almost 95% of companies in the supply chain don't have full visibility into how their supply chain works. That's a polite way of saying they get stuff out of it, but they don't really have any idea how. Open source, of course, is not exempted from the types of challenges that uncertainty and, shall we say, management with limited scope for reproducibility or scaling incurs. So in most industry verticals, open source is now in 100% of code bases, according to research by Synopsys. In the industry verticals with the least use of open source, it's still in 93% of code bases. Looking at code bases, issues are pretty live. Over half of code bases have concerns related to the licensing of the code in play. Over 80% of code bases have security vulnerabilities. Putting it in very simple terms, the open source supply chain and the software supply chain in general faces many challenges on very fundamental things like the legality of sharing code and the basic security of that code itself. Now, it's interesting that we are in such a situation when we know that managing things better is effective. We know that there are tremendous cost savings in supply chain management, about 40% through optimization. We know that over half of companies see supply chain management as a competitive edge, and 70% see supply chain management as a driver for customer service. In other words, there's a disconnect between what we know we should be doing and what we are doing. From the optics of the Open Chain project, our takeaway and our focus is that open source license compliance and open source security assurance are key parts of supply chain management. When we do software, when we do open source software, we cannot avoid these topics without exposure to significant risk and unnecessary disruption. One of the greatest challenges we face in the supply chain is continually remediating errors far too late in the process. Now, a bunch of companies got together to address this with the Open Chain project. This slide shows our current board. We have 25 multinationals at play from very different industries and very different geographies. Some of these are direct competitors. Some have no relationship to each other in the market segments that they address. All of them use open source and all of them want to make sure that this open source usage is effective, that risk is reduced and efficiency increased. Now our members represent almost 6 trillion US dollars in market value, but they're a tiny segment of the momentum behind this project. The Open Chain project working on supply chain management is an open source style project. We build our standards in the open. We build our reference material in the open. We are a community. This community has regional work groups, global work groups, and special interest groups addressing certain market segments. It's a very active space. 
Here's a slide just showing some of the larger companies that have asked for their logos to be put on our website for adopting our standards for license compliance or security assurance, plus our board members. It's a smattering of companies just giving you an idea of the type of verticals we're touching on nowadays. We're very glad to see this type of momentum and market coverage, but even that represents a tiny snapshot of what's going on. This slide just shows you a bunch of the companies that are not announcing conformance on our website. We don't know if they're conformant or not to our standards, quite frankly. Um, it's a company's business what it does. Um, they're not our board members, but they're actively involved in our community. They're working with us on supply chain management. They're working with us on open source license compliance and security assurance. So over a thousand companies are working together with the Open Chain Project on a better supply chain. And it's time to talk specifically about what we're working on. Essentially, the Open Chain Project builds standards and it makes reference material and community activities around those standards. So we have the ISO standard for open source license compliance, and we have a forthcoming ISO standard for open source security assurance. These standards are high level process standards. Your mental model should be something like ISO 9001, quality assurance. They are designed to be as simple as possible, so companies of all sizes in all markets and all geographies can adopt them and apply them. And as I mentioned before, they're developed by an open source style project. Now, these type of process standards are designed, of course, to help companies do license compliance and security assurance better. They are affecting a supply chain. Now, when it comes to doing something like having ISO standards in an open source style project, people often ask, how did we do that? The answer is we build de facto industry standards first. Then we go through something called the JTC1 pass transposition process, where these industry standards are converted into ISO standards. It's something that isn't about re-editing them. It's about converting. So it only takes about nine months. This process may be of interest to you in case you're leading some kind of development of either software-based or process-based specifications yourself. Uh, we used a past submitter called the Joint Development Foundation, and they're explicitly positioned to help you out if you happen to want to make standards too. I'm mentioning that as a side note. It's a common question. But back to the main topic, what are our standards? I said process standards. Specifically, our process standards focus on a company. They identify the inbound, internal, and outbound process inflection points, where we know the majority of licensing or security errors tend to occur in terms of lack of oversight and lack of record keeping, lack of assignment of responsibility, or lack of training. Now, our standards are short, around five pages long, but they cover all of the key process points for a company. The idea for us to fix, let's say, the external supply chain, the global supply chain, is company by company. As people use the standards, they link up, and the chain as a whole gets more effective. These standards are supported by self-certification, independent assessment, and third-party certification. In practice, that means that companies can quickly and easily get started by adopting inside their open source program office or their inner source program office. They can get independent assessment if they want from law firms or consultancies, or they can use third-party certifiers like TÜVSID, TÜVNORD, PWC, Deloitte, and so on. Our self-certification checklists and other material are very, very simple. Uh, and the standards are equally simple. As you can see from this slide, it's simple questions like, have you identified and documented the competencies required for each role? Do you have an open source policy? Have you made your program participants 
aware of the policy? Have you assigned individual responsibility for dealing with, let's say, a compliance inquiry internal or a compliance inquiry external? Very simple things, but those are the simple things that catch most of the errors in play. Now, when it comes to inner source, um, actually our standards are equally applicable. As I mentioned before, these standards work company by company. And internal supply chains are not very different to external ones. The focus on processes, training, and policy means that essentially you're dealing with the key fires that every company needs to address when they think about license compliance or security, whether their optic is internal management or external distribution or ingest of third-party stuff that's been sent to them as a product. For everyone using this type of standard, for everyone dealing with security or licensing more effectively, it's risk reduced. Long-term issues with things like M&A or spin-outs reduced. And of course, the fact that it's easy to work out what happened. There are artifacts, records, to say how things were done, who did them. And this means that when someone digs up something five years later, it's not a series of question marks. It's a series of quick notes that explain what, why, when, and how. Now, another question people have is once we put in place, let's say something like a simple standard, uh, like our license compliance standard, once we go through a checklist and realize, yes, we have the key processes in place, how do we scale that? How do we make that cover a big company? How can a multinational use it? Um, the answer, of course, is you automate as much as possible. And the Open Chain community has been working on how to describe the type of automation that may be useful for you. A lot of people are interested in things like software bill of materials. And to be clear, our standards say have a software bill of materials. And we've been saying that since 2016. When people want to get started with ingest, internal management, and export of software, when they want to have things like software bill of materials and they want to scale, automation is key. And understanding what automation is available or what aspects of automation you require or tools have is key. Our automation work group tries to work on this by describing the challenge at hand creating tool chain capabilities and trying to explain what tools cover what points. One example of the type of interesting tool that we're seeing in market is Foslight. This is something I'm highlighting because it's a bit sideways to what people normally hear of in places like Europe. Foslight is from Korea. It was created by LG Electronics as an internal management system, uh, and they decided to open source it for the benefit of all the other user companies in the world. It has command line functionality, but also a very sophisticated graphical user interface. It's got a, a hub similar to a commercial product. It supports SPDX as a software bill of materials. It supports plugging in other tools. And it of course is entirely flexible whether people want to use it on premises or create a hosted version. Trying to understand that those type of tools are available as well as commercial products is one of the keys to working out what's right for you as you begin to scale. Doing it on your own is quite frankly, quite hard. We try to provide as much support as possible through our community. That's why we have things like the tooling work group. Now, I wanted to give you some specific little tastes of the news around a project like OpenChain. Um, ISO 5230 is our standard for license compliance. It's been in market a while. I mentioned that we only know uh, companies are using it if they tell us. That's because it's an ISO standard. Uh, and it's before that an open standard. People can just take it and use it. Uh, but 102 companies have come to us and said, you know, put, put our logo on your website. We're using this as a, a standard for open source compliance. We have a program and we want to encourage our supply chain. As you can see, just like our member companies, uh, it's 
all over the place, big companies, small companies, companies in every market and every geography. Some are notable for various reasons, like China Mobile, uh, world's largest telco. Some are notable for other reasons. So for instance, picking out a company randomly, Zoom, a company that ingests a tremendous amount of open source, but isn't a major distributor. Now, those numbers are an example of the type of adoption we've seen. And, and recently, let's say in China, we've seen Alibaba Cloud, ByteDance, that's our friends at TikTok, Z1, that's SAIC or Shanghai Motors, China's number one auto company. Interestingly, world's second biggest EV company. Uh, the world's biggest EV company isn't Tesla. The biggest one is BYD. Number two is Shanghai Automotive. Number three is Tesla by volume shipped. Uh, and uh, the world's third largest hybrid company. Anyway, when someone does a survey, we're always heartened to see how many companies use our standards. Uh, PwC had a look in Germany recently. They found that from their survey sample, 20% of German companies with more than 2,000 employees were already using our ISO standard for open source license compliance. What are they using it for? Well, we don't really know. <laughs> they have a program somewhere to do something. It might be about external supply chains. It might be about internal supply chains between departments. Quite frankly, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that they're using it. Meanwhile, our security standard is much newer. Uh, basically, we found people were using the compliance standard for security. Um, and then our friends at Lockheed Martin came along and helped us make this spin out or fork sister standard uh, which came into market in late last year and will be announced as an ISO standard in about 40 days. Uh, on this slide, as I pointed out, we're about to complete our standardization process with JTC1. That's with the wonderful help of Joint Development Foundation. Uh, as Seth said a couple of weeks ago, we're most likely to end up passing with edits. Uh, top secretly on this call, I'll announce we have passed and we're just doing the edits now. And we're tidying everything up. But before it became an ISO standard, it was an industry standard. And we've already seen adoption from companies like BlackBerry, LG, and Interneuron over in the UK. These are the companies that came to us and said, hey, put our logo on your website, which is very nice. Now we try to make it as easy as possible to get started with things like our standards or just adopting a few of the processes. We have material to explain our project. We try to make it super easy to join our calls for any of our work groups. Um, for, for our project, there's no gateway, by the way. The only members are the board members. Everything else is turn up and that's it. You're part of education or specification, whatever. Uh, and for that reason, we try to make it super easy to get started. We have one of the world's largest reference libraries around open source management, over a thousand documents in multiple languages. Whether people want to do training, make Kanban workflows for adopting our standards, make a policy, all of this type of material is available uh, on our GitHub repository. And all of it, apart from the case studies, is public domain. Uh, some of the material is legacy. It's in document formats that are hard to edit. Uh, so we're trying to transform that into Markdown and other nifty and cool things that are easy to translate and rework. We've seen some of our materials go in interesting places. Recently, we found out that the online training courses we made with um, LF Training are being used by Continental, Bosch, and KPMG for their developers and external contractors. This type of data point is really cool when people let us know. Um, it just shows that apart from our standards, our reference material also goes deep. We do a ton of webinars like this, but different. Um, our webinars are all over the place. We cover everything from tooling to inner source. And we've done, as of today, 54 webinars since April, 2020. We also help with other things. For example, uh, we have helped turn the reuse specification from FSFE, which is a process specification again, but very descriptive of a workflow into a CC0 or effectively public domain document. 
We've also updated stuff like conformance badges. So if people want to tell other companies that they're using our standards, it's easier to do so. Now, one of the reasons I'm here today, apart from saying that this is useful for inner source and it's easy to get started, is because we're actually editing the next generation of licensing and security standards. I said we're totally open and we are. We edit them by email, telephone, and everything is centralized on GitHub. To help us to review the drafts or the open issues, just turn up. If you have an idea, open an issue, make a comment, do a pull request. Our slides from all of our meetings are freely available. And you know I think this is important. As ISO standards, they'll have a long tail. You'll be meeting them in contracts, procurement contracts, M&A contracts, negotiations of all sorts. Uh, our current standard for license compliance has been out for a while. The security one as an ISO standard will just be out. But these new updates, these next generation updates are coming, perhaps 2024. And it's a very good idea. And we very much welcome your perspective. Look at this from the inner source um, approach and let us know if you have any suggestions for improvement. Uh, we also have a legal work group, and this is about making model provisions. That means helping your legal teams think through how these type of standards can be used in discussions around things like procurement. This is a very gentle way of saying that sometimes the legal team is asking questions like, it's very nice this exists. How do people use it? What, what are people saying? Um, we, of course, are not prescriptive about any terms that would be used in legal things, especially nothing that would be in a contract, but we're happy to provide examples to help those type of teams think through this stuff. Inner source and um, open source program offices often have deep expertise. Legal departments and IP departments maybe have a little less, so we try to lend a hand. Anyway, this is a big project. Uh, we've got a big community, tons of commercial support. I mentioned certifiers earlier. Uh, we have 12 certifiers around the world, including, you know, uh, you know Veritas, Tub Nord, Tub Sud, PwC, Deloitte. Uh, these are organizations that can help in various ways. Virtually all of the major tooling vendors, uh, most of the major consultancies, again, they're official partners and they basically try to help make sure that their customers know that there's a standardized process management for open source, compliance, and security. I'd love to have you as part of it, but even if you're not that interested in helping us build our standards or use our standards today, love to help direct you to our reference material and perhaps friends and colleagues around the world that you mightn't have a link with right now. We have deep tentacles into places like China, Japan, Korea, and, uh, you know, one of the key things we get in our community is people saying, introduce us, find us new friends and colleagues. So uh, that's it. I'm very happy to take questions. Thank you for your time.